Welcome to Wi-Fi. Please subscribe if you haven't already. In today's video, we will be covering the topic of the Vesica Pisces. And in general, I'd like to cover all of the irrational numbers that we use, such as pi and phi and other such constants. And they can all be found in the Vesica Pisces. So let's get on with it. What is the Vesica Pisces? The Vesica Pisces is a geometric construct that is created by two intersecting circles on their centers. And these circles are the same radius. So as you see here on the screen, I just have a simple point. From that point, you set your compass to whatever size you want and you draw a circle. And then you maintain your compass size and you move over to any point on the edge and you draw another circle. Now this is the basic shape of the Vesica Pisces and the Vesica Pisces is the shape between the two circles. It is the old blade diamond shape if you want to call it that. Or a diamond in maximum surface geometry. Now there are so many relationships that you can make with this shape and reality but I'm just going to cover the few that I understand really well. So now if we then take our compass and we draw a circle that goes between the Vesica Pisces in the middle and its diameter is the width of the Vesica Pisces and we make this circle have a diameter of 1 this will define every number that we are looking for. So you'll notice here that our center circle has a diameter of 1 and on either side of it we have two circles of the same diameter. So that basically means that our shape has an overall width of 3. And so we can put a circle around that with a diameter of 3. which encompasses the entire shape. If our center circle is 1, then that means that the circumference of that circle is pi. There's our first important number that we're looking for. It's easy to find. So that also means that this circle beside it, the second circle, is 2 pi, and then the circle that is encompassing the entire shape of the Vesca Pisces would be 3 pi. So carefully examine this picture and the dimensions that I have shown. We have 0 0.5, that means that this line here is 0 0.5 length. And then we also have this line here, which is 1 in length. And then we also have a line of 1.5 dimensions or units in length. And then we have the diameter here of this circle too, positioned at the center of the circle. See how, that, uh, see how that's drawn there? Just make sure you understand this before we move on. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Okay, now if we construct lines from the endpoints of these other lines that we just defined in the tree and the black lines here, and these yellow lines, if we extend them through the center of our Vesica Pisces, we've now defined a whole bunch of square roots. So, the square root of 1 is 1, and that is basically the diameter of our little circle in the middle. And then the next line going outward is showing you the square root of 2, and the square root of 3 is the center line between the Vesica Pisces, and then we have the square root of 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and the square root of 9 is the diameter of this entire encompassing circle of the Vesica Pisces. Quite amazing that you can construct all these square roots using that relative geometry. You'll notice how these sort of encourage a spiraling motion from the center outward or from the outward inward, whichever way you want to look at it. And so here along the square root of 5 we find our famous and quite accurately we find phi and little phi as defined by the red line and the blue lines here. And I've also used them to draw circles from their radius. So imagine that phi had a radius and little phi had a radius, and we drew those circles here. 
I scribe some arcs from the smaller circle to the larger circle. And it gave me this shape here which reminded me of the human heart. And it fit almost perfectly in there, but that's to be expected. Considering the heart is based on phi geometry. Maybe we'll get into that in uh, videos in the future. And this is how we find the famous constant for E. Which is Napier's constant, I believe, is how you pronounce that. Euler's constant. I can't pronounce this guy's name. <laughs> which is about two, two times his constant. You can find it here with this blue line. These two constants are famous in physics. And calculating things in general. So, so far we can see how amazing the Vesica Pisces is. When you just simply define the center diameter of one, it's pretty amazing. I want to get into a couple of quick geometries that you can find here. This is how you can find the relationship between a pentagon and a hexagon having the same line length within the Vesica Pisces. And you can also find a 12-sided shape with the same edge length using the Vesica Pisces. Here is the full geometry from what I've discovered. 12-sided shape and then inside you can find a square which almost kind of fits the geometry perfectly. It's really neat. Here are just some simple way to find 60 degrees and 30 degrees using the Vesica Pisces if you ever need to. And then also another uh, bunch of ways to find the square root of 2 and just showing you how the square root of 3 and the square root of 5 are kind of related in this rectangle that they make. And then what I want you to notice here in this uh, little table that I have here showing you the length of the edge and these are the plutonic solids and the length of the edge so they're also based on 1 and phi and the square root of 2 and I've kind of listed them here from greatest to least and they seem to go from phi down to little phi. Let's give you a minute to kind of go through that chart there. Notice that the cube has a length of 1, icosahedron has a length of phi, and then the dodecahedron has a length of little phi. And another interesting thing you can find using the Vesica Pisces, and when you scale the Vesica Pisces into like a doubling form almost, you get the pyramid angle, otherwise known as the pyramid angle, 51 degrees, 51 minutes. And so this defines the angle of the Great Pyramid, quite simply actually, and it's pretty accurate too. So that is my presentation on the Vesica Pisces geometry for you all. And if you have uh, some other reference material that I could look at, I'd be glad to look at. You can leave a comment in the comments below. I'd like to check it out. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, leave a like, subscribe for more of this epic content. And we'll see you in the next video. Until next time.